To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To get somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know We are up to our guest segment, Mark. We have um, Bill Falcon in the studio with us. He is the author of Addicted to Real Estate and the owner of several real estate companies. Very good. Phil, so, uh, good to see you again. Hey guys, great to be back. Thanks for having me. Phil was with us when we first started out in the very beginning, man. Yes, this was that five years ago? Yeah, oh nine. Oh nine, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what's your topic today, Phil? Well, I want to tell you a little bit about the uh, exciting things that I'm doing investing in real estate. Um, one of the things, you know, I haven't had a chance to really tell you about it is uh, vacation rentals in Florida. I'm really excited about it and you know I'm always I'm a kind of guy I'm always looking for the next great thing you know I don't want to just buy a duplex in Northeast Philadelphia and make two three hundred bucks a month it just doesn't do it for me anymore <laughs> um, I've been in the real estate business since 1989 so 26 years I, I hold myself to a higher standard I have to do much better than that so one of the things I've been doing and, and I'm really having a great time doing it and making a lot of money is in Florida I went down there in 2012 and I started buying up as many properties as I could. And I put together a real nice size portfolio down there. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about what it is that I'm doing. For example, in 2012 I was buying duplexes for about $120,000 a piece. And each side of the duplex was roughly 750 square feet, two bedrooms, one bathroom. Each side of the duplex, nothing real fancy, but they were all pretty close to the beach. So all you have to do with these places is you fix them up a little bit, maybe you throw 10 grand into each side, make them nice, right. and then you furnish them. Call that another 10 grand into each side. So maybe my total nut on these duplexes is 150, <laughs> 160 grand, right? right. And I bought a, a ton of them down there. And then you turn them into vacation rentals. Now one thing I learned about vacation rentals is people will pay outrageous <laughs> amounts of money to get out of the cold. Now, they're certainly not calling my phone in, in the summertime, but once the weather starts to get a little damp uh, and a little cold, the phone rings off the wall. I am charging people for these 750 square foot duplex apartments, just one side, 4,500 bucks a month, wow. right? And they rent January, they rent February, they rent March, they rent April. Now, once I get into mid-April, I lower the price a little bit, but I'm still getting two grand a month. And even if you break down Florida's rental season, it kind of works like this. Think of it in like three seasons. So the first four months of the season, the first trimester, it, it's amazing. You rent every minute of whatever you got. The second trimester, I thought that not a lot of people go to Florida in the summer. Who would want to go there? Well, I'll tell you who goes there. Floridians. Guess what they're doing in the summertime? They're home. Their kids are home. They're going nuts. They want to go to the beach, just like we do up here. So I rent to Floridians, people from Tampa, never Jacksonville, or, or, I never thought of it either until I got into the business. So the second trimester, it doesn't make as much money as the first one, but it does really well. Okay? I, can, I can cover my, if, if you compare to what I could get for an annual tenant, maybe I could get 10000 for one side of a duplex. Okay? So if you turn them into a vacation rental, I'm averaging about 25000 a side. So can you imagine, I, I got a mortgage payment of $700 a month, and the place is bringing in $50,000 a year gross. Now, I have a lot of expenses I'm covering, the cable bill, the electric. I, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a real Should we feel sorry for you? <laughs> so, well, that's the reason I'm telling people about it. I don't want to share it. I can't buy it in a newspaper here and there? Yeah. Okay. I can't buy a ball of Florida myself. I, I'm trying, <laughs> but I can't do it. So I love to share the exciting things that I'm doing. It's a great business. Here's, here's something that has nothing to do with money that has really enriched my life with these Florida vacation rentals. Uh, before I was in the Florida vacation rental business, when, somebody, when I had a row home in Philly and the tenant moved out, I didn't call up the wife and kids and say, come on, let's go down for the weekend, right? <laughs> we don't do that, okay? But in Florida, now that I have, I have uh, 25 uh, places down there, cool. they're all vacation rentals, and now I can go to Florida on a vacation anytime I want for free. It's a beautiful thing. It's even right. a write-off, okay? Because I'm down there looking for more deals, for sure. taking care of problems, working out whatever it is I'm involved with, and I, I wouldn't be happier any other way. I, I can't, 
handle going on vacation unless I got at least some good work to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked the, the town of Sarasota, which uh, you may or may not know is the number one rated beach in the United States. That's right, you heard me correctly. Number yeah, one really? rated beach in the United States. Better in Hawaii, better in California, right? It's called Siesta Key Beach. And the reason you probably haven't heard of it is because the people who live there go to a very deep depths to make sure that you can't even find the place. <laughs> so if you're, if, you're, if you're looking for a sign that says beach this way, the locals tear them out and throw them <laughs> if you want. Um, so I found it, I found it by uh, luck, really. Uh, my wife and I were, were traveling up and down the west coast of Florida trying to pick a good place. We knew we wanted to invest in Florida. We just couldn't figure out where. And we said, you know, let's, let's go up and down the whole west coast because I knew the east coast real well. We found Sarasota by accident. We went into a bar to get a sandwich, and about nine hours later, I was uh, carrying my wife out of the bar. <laughs> Must have been a good sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was just, it's just, you know, sometimes it's called karma. I, I met the mayor while I was there. I met, uh, I met uh, real estate investors while I was there, realtors. And by the time I had left that bar, I'd already worked out like <laughs> half of all the connections. I People are always going around. Investors are famous for always saying, you have to build a team in this business. You have to have your team. Well, I put my team together over about 12 drinks. <laughs> so, uh, Is so, that team still together? <laughs> yeah, most of them, yeah, okay. most of them. We, we, we threw a few of them out of the team, but no problem. But um, you can check out a lot of my vacation rentals at my website. It's called gosiesta.com. Siesta stands for Siesta Key, Florida. Go siesta.com and you can see I've got properties on the beach. The ones I'm telling you about the at the price range I'm talking about, they're a couple of miles away from the beach, but still really close. So you can hop in a car, you can drive five minutes and you're on the beach. But some people just won't be happy unless they're actually on the beach. That's right. So I have six properties down there that are uh, literally on the beach. And uh, those properties, you know, amazing, 2,500 bucks a week in winter. Uh, it's amazing some of the kind of money that people are willing to pay, but it's, a, it's actually Siesta Key on the East Coast isn't that well known because people on the East Coast always went to the East Coast of Florida. That's right. So a lot of people who go to the West Coast of Florida are people from, uh, you know, from Michigan, from Illinois, uh, from from the Dakotas, from Ohio. So it's much more popular with people in the Midwest. Yeah, the Gulf side. I, I, I don't know that much about the Gulf side. Yeah, Always what? went to Lauderdale and I went up and down there. Well, Lauderdale. your new buddy Phil Falcone's going to make sure you learn that. Now, 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 I'm going to know. <laughs> so what, what's happening with your addicted to real estate and your seminars and all that? Well, uh, you know, I do a lot of education with real estate investors. Uh, I, just, I just love this business. After all, I'm addicted to it, right? right. So uh, I want to talk about real estate morning, noon, and night. And, um, you know, my wife really kind of got tired of that about a decade ago. So I have to find somebody that will actually listen to me. <laughs> so I thought, well, why not just have real estate meetings? People will come and I'll, I'll share with them all the things that I do. So I'm, I'm an open book. I'll tell you right now, I give away more information about real estate investing than anyone you will ever meet. Most of these uh, real estate investor gurus out there, you got to give them $5,000 for them to send yeah. you a, a boring book, okay? All right. Uh, I, I share with people what I do. If, uh, I hold meetings right now once a month in Warminster, PA. Uh, why Warminster? Because I live in Warminster, so it makes my life easy. But uh, you can come out there, check them out. I'm on meetup.com. You just look for Addicted to Real Estate. If you go to addictedtorealestate.com and you put your name and email address in, I'll send you invites all the time to my meetings. And every month we talk about a different topic, and it's a great place to, to share, to network, I got people come to my meetings that own 100 houses. I got people that, that haven't bought anything or just getting started. And we all help each other out. It's, uh, investors got to stick together. There's a small world of us, and we need right. to help each other. You do. You do need to help you. And then plus you're opening some real estate companies too. Well, you know, when you buy as much real estate as I do, <coughs> sooner or later I had to get a real estate license. And then uh, I do a lot of crazy deals, and my broker was always giving me a hard time. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to buy my own real estate office. And that way the broker can work for me. <laughs> I have some control over um, getting thrown out of offices from time to time. So um, I opened up my own agency. Guess what it's called? Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Okay, I want to tell people what it is that I'm interested in. You know, so many real estate companies are, are founded with the owner's name. All right? And now we may know those names, uh, 
uh, because they're, they're nationally known names, but I wanted to give a real estate company a name to let you know, hey, if you're going to come hang your license with me, you have to be addicted. I won't let you come there unless you're addicted. Right? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you about my special test to determine if you are addicted, but you'll find that out <laughs> if you contact me. So uh, you do these seminars for, for an addicted to real estate seminar every month, right? Yeah, every month I do the seminars and I video the seminars and I put them up on YouTube. And if you're somebody who likes to watch YouTube videos, you can look for me on, uh, on YouTube. Guess what name you got to look me on? <laughs> addicted to real estate? Addicted to real estate TV, baby. Addicted to real estate TV. That's me. All right. So how long ago did you first write the book? Uh, my original book I wrote in 2010. I got a book that's coming out in uh, probably a couple of months. And uh, it's on a different topic. It's going to be about how to, f how to buy houses with none of your own money, which after 26 years in this business, I've, uh, I've learned every trick of the trade as far as investing goes. Okay? And I consider myself to be the, the grand master, the seven black belt real estate investor <laughs> at this point. The sensei. And what I've really learned how to do and mastered is how to buy houses with none of your own money. So you're probably asking yourself, well, how do you do that? You know, and there's basically three ways that you can buy houses with none of your own money. And uh, I talk about them all the time at my real estate meetings and on my YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, today, if you guys want to talk about it, we could talk a little bit about it. It's, uh, but I, I love sharing it with people. So uh, I guess the real thing is, how many houses would you buy if you could buy houses with none of your own money? And the answer is all of them, right? right? right. As many of them as you feel like buying. So that's the situation I'm in right now. It's a great place to be. That's good. Do you think it's still the market's still there for people to be investors? I mean, do you think anything has changed? I think people can be investors no matter what's going on in the market. I, I agree. I, I I bought the most of my flips in 2003 and four when it was like a crazy frenzied market. But there's always opportunities if you know how to look for them. Well, are you going to tell us the three secrets, or no? You're going to yeah. you're, we're going to have to Google that. You can pry it out of me. <laughs> I mean, well, you, can we do one a minute? Okay, yeah, we can All do right. one a minute. All right, let's do one a minute. All right, so one of the ways that I buy houses with with none of my own money is I use private investors. Okay, now I could go to a bank. I mean, um, obviously, I've been in this business a long time. I'm a qualified guy. I can get a loan from any bank I want. But what's the problem with the bank is that when I go to borrow money from them. All right, they're only going to lend me 75% or 80% of the uh, purchase price that I'm getting the property for. So what if I bought a $200,000 property for 130 grand? Well, the bank doesn't care that it's worth 200 grand. They're only going to lend me 70% of 130 grand. Right. Okay, but if I go to a private investor, meaning a private individual who puts up the money, they get a first position note, they get a first position mortgage on the property just like a bank would. So there's really no difference in the paperwork. But the difference for me is a tremendous difference, okay? First of all, let me explain. I'm the owner of the property. The private investor takes the position of the bank, okay? And what I do is I simply make mortgage payments to the investor. Right. So the real advantage to me is I can go to the investor and I can borrow 100% of the property value, 110%. What if it needs repairs? Uh, anything I want to do. It, these are private individuals, so I'm not dealing with a robot. I'm not dealing with a giant corporation. Right. I'm dealing with an individual, and I simply explain to them that this is the property, this is how I got it cheap, and, and this is why I want to borrow X amount of dollars. And it works out beautifully for me. So that's how, one way you can buy houses with none of your own money. We ready for minute two? Go ahead. Okay. The next way that I do it is uh, I do seller financing. Uh, a lot of houses in the Philadelphia area are free and clear. Last time I checked, approximately one-third of them. So if you find somebody who has a house that's free and clear, um, a real simple way to do it is, well, what's the first thing that most real estate investors do? The minute they meet a seller, they try to chop them off at the knees. Well, you want 100 grand, I'll give you 60, I'll give you 57, I'll give you 58, that kind of thing. That's right. all they ever do. Okay, so I come up to a guy and he says, I want 100 grand. I say, okay. Then I shut up because now I got his attention, don't I? Right? I'll give him his price, I don't care. I'm not really that price sensitive. I don't worry so much about what I'm buying the properties for. I worry about what I'm paying for it monthly. Because who's really paying for it? Not me, my tenants are. So I need a monthly payment that my tenants can afford. And that is where my mindset is. Especially if you're dealing with senior citizens who are older and they're selling me the house. Guess what they're missing from their life? Income. They need income, right? They're gonna sell their house for 100 grand. They're gonna get this 
gigantic tax bill, and now what are they going to do with this money? They've got to invest it somewhere. So what I do is I'll make payments to them. Maybe I'm making payments to them $1,000 a month for the next 25 years. Do you have any idea how comfortable that makes them? I just solved one of the biggest problems in their lives, which is that they need income. Income. Right. And most people understand how a note and mortgage work. It's simple. Most people have lived in a house at one point or another. Right. So you're, you're selling them on a concept of something very simple and easy for them to understand. All right. Well, we're going to have to stop there, Phil, but we'll have you back on. Plus, uh, some good news, too. You might be having your own show here at WWDB. Yeah, I'm looking into it, and uh, I think I'm going to do it. So uh, I'll, I'll be able to let you know next time I'm on the air with you. Very good. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Phil. That was Thanks, great. Phil. That was good. I, I, we got to have you back and finish up some of that. I, that was interesting. Yep. All right, so with that, you're listening to Good News in Real Estate, all positive all the time. We'll be right back. We were supposed to do the uh, Dr. Ray with yeah, call. Yeah, but you just blew out my left eardrum, so. Who <laughs> <laughs> did I get? No, I did. did. Sorry. But that was good, though. A lot of people don't think like that. Why not have somebody hold it? Because that's what some people need. They need that monthly income, which they're sitting on a ton of equity. That's how I got my first investment property. Yeah. Right. The table lied. Said that his, he wasn't, it was a big.